The Aeronautical Development Agency is hiring additional 200 engineers to support the testing and production activities for Tejas Mark II project. The Utam Mark II radar for Tejas Mark II has entered fabrication stage, and a unit will be delivered in five months for integration. The armies of India and China will complete disengagement by 29th October. National Aerospace Laboratories has enhanced the onboard oxygen generation system on MiG-29K fighter jet, enhancing its performance and safety for high-altitude operations. Advanced Weapons and Equipment India Limited has invited private sector companies to collaborate in the development of an autonomous or remote-controlled robot mounted with a sniper rifle. Veda Aeronautics has developed an advanced fire control system AGS-30, equipped with thermal imager and laser range finder to detect identify and track targets in low visibility and adverse weather conditions. Bharat Dynamics is in advanced stage talks with three potential export customers, for its Amogha three-man portable anti-tank guided missile. Recent satellite images have shown a substantial increase in Chinese DF-26 intermediate-range ballistic missiles, as 59 new transporter erector launchers have been spotted at a newly developed staging area. Civil Aviation Minister will soon present a significant proposal to the Finance Ministry, outlining plans for the development of India's regional transport aircraft project, backed by Hindustan Aeronautics and National Aerospace Laboratories. A debate has started, that whether the Eurofighter Typhoon can beat the Rafale in the 114 MRFA competition. One of the decisive factors that led to the Eurofighter losing the MMRCA tender was its high procurement cost, and 20% higher life cycle costs as compared to the French Rafale fighter jet. While the Rafale won on price, the Eurofighter Typhoon was well received by the Indian Air Force, as it performed excellently in technical evaluations. Airbus has offered the latest Eurofighter Typhoon Tranche 5 under the MRFA, that too with 30% reduced costs, with the potential to surpass 35%, and the Indian facility will be able to deliver 24 jets per year. The Eurofighter also carries the Meteor Missile and Captor re radar, and the performance of Eurofighter in air-to-air -air combat is regarded as superior to the Rafale, particularly in dogfighting and high-altitude interception. If the Eurofighter wants to beat the Rafale, it has already done it in terms of price, but it has to offer better terms of transfer of technology, that will make it highly irresistible for India. India's strategic focus has now shifted towards the development of the 13,000 ton S5 class next generation SSPNs, and Prime Minister's office will directly oversee the program. While the Indian Navy initially expressed interest in acquiring six S5 class SSPNs, but latest information suggests that the final number is likely to be four, that will be built in pairs over two phases, and each SSPN will cost around 20,000 crore rupees. The S5 SSBN will be equipped with upcoming K7 and K8 MERF capable submarine launched ballistic missiles, that will have a strike range of over 12,000 kilometers. The Indian Army and Indian Navy had procured two Drishti 10 UAVs from Adani Defence to assess their performance, and latest reports indicate that further orders for the Drishti 10 might not materialize, as its performance in high altitude operations has not been much impressive. The Army Air Force and Navy are keen on issuing a tender for the procurement of 76 mil UAVs, with 60 units designated for the Army, 12 for the Indian Air Force and four for the Navy, that would allow the forces to acquire more advanced UAVs, rather than settling on interim solutions like the Drishti-10. Several countries are expected to offer their own male UAV platforms for this tender, all of which will be required to be locally manufactured in India. Today's Top 3 Comments <laughs>